Some people might click out of this video and they're like, oh, you know, that's not what I want to hear. All right, my friend. I got an email from someone recently with the subject line, I'm broke. What should I do? And they said they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start and they need more money. So where do I start and what do I do? And I've never really made a step-by-step -step video explaining how I went from making $8,525 to over a million a year. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that I made $8,525 in a year. While I was researching for this video, I actually found my old tax return. So I thought I'd show you them as inspiration and proof. See it here. 2017, $8,525. A couple years later, pulled in over a million and then over two million. And I'm showing you this because I want you to see this isn't bullshit. So how did I go from 8,000 bucks to becoming a millionaire that quickly? That's what we're going to break down in this video. Now, truthfully, it'd probably take me hours to break down every single step. So this could be a multi-video series. So if you like this video and you want to see more like this, breaking it down, you can hit the like button on it. Let me know in the comments down more, please. And if you haven't yet, be sure to get my free financial success hypnosis. One of the most important things I did was create a financial success hypnosis for myself to start to retrain my mind. It's free. You can click right here to get it or go to jakeshypnosis.com. It's pinned in the description and the top comments as well. It's my free success hypnosis. All right. Now, first thing, I believe in absolute self-accountability with your financial results and your money. I think when it comes to your bank account, everything that happens is your fault. When I made $8,000, I thought the world was unfair. I didn't think it was my fault because I didn't think it was. And once I made a million dollars, it was because I took 100% responsibility. Even if I thought things were unfair or unjust, making $8,000 in a year is my fault. End of story. And if you're broken, you want to fix it, or maybe you're doing all right, but you want to have more money instead of just getting by, the temptation is to think that you need a new strategy or a new business or a new job or a new side hustle or a new mentor or a new whatever. But I actually never changed my business industry to go from $8,000 to a couple million. You might think you need change, but most of the time you don't, or at least not yet. There's probably hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars in low-hanging fruit that you've left on the table by not taking 100% accountability. The first thing is to pick up all that money that you're missing. Work in a way that you're actually proud of yourself. For me personally, I had to get to a place where I was real enough with myself where I could find enough mental fortitude to wake up, look in the mirror and say, I can do better. I can do more. I'm not proud of myself. I can wake up earlier. I can be more organized. I can be more focused. I can stop wasting so much time. I can be better. And it's my fault. Sorry. If you're broke, if you're not making the money you want and you want to change it, you have to say it is your fault. You have to look at the reasons, all the blame and responsibility that you're pushing off and you have to take control back. Because if you have any level of belief that your financial situation is because of somebody or something that you can't control, you can't get out of the spot. So you have to resist this broke mindset. You have to resist this broke mindset. You need to be able to resist the temptation of blaming anybody or anything for the digits in your bank account right now. The year that I made $8,000, I hired a consultant who stole a few thousand dollars left in my savings. I could blame him for why things were worse, or I could accept that I put myself in this position and I could make sure it never happened again. I had two choices. When you make an excuse like the system is rigged or someone did you dirty, what you're doing is absolving yourself from responsibility. You're saying, I don't have to stand up. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to get rich because it doesn't matter because I'm a victim. It's unfair. Just doing this alone can add an extra zero to your income. Now, before we move on to number two, let me say, I say that with all love. It's just something you got to do. And I wanted to be honest. This was the key. Number two is you have to stop being controlled by your feelings. You have to decide it's not about being broke anymore. 
It's about getting rich. It's not about doing what you feel like doing, right? If you keep doing what you feel like doing, what happens? Nothing. Steve Jobs would have never invented the iPhone. Martin Luther King would have been watching movies on his couch. The founding fathers of America wouldn't have gone to war to establish their sovereignty. Henry Ford, he wouldn't have invented automobiles and we'd still be riding horses, which would be kind of cool. Thomas Edison would have quit working on the light bulb after a few failed attempts and we'd be living by candlelight. None of them were controlled by their feelings. They were controlled by ideals and objectives that govern their lives, right? I was the person who only did what felt good. I just wanted ease. I had to finally wake up and say, I don't feel like sitting at my computer all day. I don't feel like it, but I must do it. I will not scroll the internet mindlessly. I will not party and have some beers. I will not be lazy. I will stop being comfortable. In my experience, money comes quickly when you realize you need to do the things you're supposed to do instead of just whatever feels good. And if you only do what feels good, that's how we have so many people that are addicted to their phones, that are addicted to porn, that are addicted to partying and drugs and social media and alcohol and television because it gives you quick dopamine. It feels good. It's easy. But then you have no moral compass. You have no principles. You have no self-honor. You have no values. You have nothing you're proud of. You just have feelings and biochemical reactions in your brain. And when you're old and your grandchildren are running around, and they ask you to tell the story of your life, what are you going to tell them? That's the difference between a millionaire and everybody else. You don't get to buy whatever you want. Pick out your dream car and cash, take your family on five-star vacations, and retire early if you only do what you feel like doing. In my opinion, one of the top predictors of how much money you will earn comes from your ability to do the things you don't feel like doing. And another key principle, only you know what you're doing when nobody else is watching. Only you know if you're willing to do it when nobody else is watching. Only you know if you really care about improving your financial situation. You might not care that much, truthfully, and that's totally cool, but you need to accept that, right? And you'll probably always be broke, and that's okay right? There's plenty of people that don't have a lot of money that are relatively happy, but you need to be real with yourself and see if you actually care enough about not being broke because you might like the idea of having more money. You might even buy lottery tickets. You might even fantasize about making $100,000 a month or $500,000 a month or even $5,000 a month. But only you know if you really want it where you just like the idea of it. And I don't think many people understand how easy the world is compared to 100 years ago or most of human history. This is the best time to be alive and the easiest time to be alive ever. If we weren't alive right now and we were alive during the other 99% of recorded history, firstly, you wouldn't have any refrigeration or electricity, so your family would probably die from simple viruses and bacteria. You wouldn't live to be 90 years old. You'd be lucky if you even lived to 50. If you got an infection, you wouldn't have medical aid. You'd either get better eventually, or they just chop your leg off with no anesthetic, and then you'd crawl around on the dirt without a leg and no prosthetics and no wheelchair. You'd be fighting in wars, and you'd be arrested if you didn't feel like fighting in wars. And for most of human history, you didn't even have legit guns, so you'd be doing close combat with swords. If you lost, your village would be raided, your family might be killed. If you were lucky enough to avoid that, you'd just be doing manual labor your entire life, and if you didn't feel like doing that, and you felt like taking it easy, your family would starve. You wouldn't be able to say, I don't feel like doing it, I don't have the energy, I'm not in the mood, I'm not very motivated right now and I think it's important to think about this and just see how lucky you are because when you're broke you don't feel lucky you feel sad you feel depressed you feel unlucky you don't feel proud you feel like your life sucks you have to snap out of that mindset 
and stop letting your feelings distract you with all of today's comforts, temptations, and quick dopamine pleasures. One day, I, I don't know what happened. My girl dumped me, maybe it was because I was only making $8,000, and I was moping around in my bed all day, and I finally sat there and I'm like, why am I being a loser? I used my feelings of ease and comfort and leisure uh, to justify not doing anything that truly mattered. And that shift has made me more money than I ever thought. So if you think you want to be a millionaire in a relatively quick period of time, the best thing you can possibly do is to prepare for difficulty. If you prepare for difficulty and base your actions off principles and values instead of feelings and comfort, there's no way you can stay broke. You either force yourself to do the things your mind says not to do, or you suffer the difficulty of just existing with no freedom. So what do you want to do, right? Do you want to be invisible and just hide and exert as little effort as possible and mask all those feelings of incompleteness with as much quick and cheap dopamine and serotonin as you can possibly find? You have to make a choice. It's going to be a bit difficult either way. And that leads us to principle number three. Stop waiting for motivation. Now, before we get into that, if you find your mind is just the biggest obstacle, like, it's okay. All these things that happen, they're not your fault, right? It is what it is, but we have to decide what we want to do with it now. And one of the best tools you can use is to hypnotize yourself, is to brainwash yourself for success. So get my free financial success hypnosis. It's free. You can click right there or go to jakeshypnosis.com or it's pinned to the comments and in the description right there down below. About a million people from all the world have used it. Every day I get these awesome stories of people who get a new job, make more money. So it's free. You can check that out. And if you're enjoying this so far, these next points are the most important points. And if you're enjoying this so far, be sure to let me know down below. If you want to see more and I can make this into a multi-part series. But just remember, you're closer than you think. It's really not a huge shift that has to happen. You can make more money. All right, so principle number three is to stop waiting for motivation. I used to have to get jacked up, excited before I would focus and get anything done. But I became a millionaire in a relatively quick period of time once I realized that motivation isn't real, right? It's not really a real thing. And when you're broke, you're waiting to be motivated. You falsely believe that you need motivation and you need to get fired up to do the things you're supposed to do. Multi-millionaires who work every day don't want to work every day. They aren't always motivated, right? Honestly, I'm probably motivated 20% of the time. Like, hell, I didn't even want to film this video today. I wanted, didn't want to film at all. I wanted to hang out in the sun and swim in the pool, right? Like, I don't feel motivated all the time. But I have certain principles and commitments and I do not negotiate with myself on them. So motivation is the wrong word if you don't want to be broke anymore. It's the same thing for people that are in fantastic shape and they train every day. You don't want to go to the gym every day. You don't feel like it all the time, but you still go. So these kinds of people aren't motivated. They're driven by a set of principles, morals, and values, which makes them disciplined to adhere to those principles. So when I said I wanted to get rich, I pulled out a piece of paper and I wrote, what are my values and my priorities? I went through everything I did in a day, in a week, in a month, every person I interacted with, and I crossed everything off this list that didn't align with my new values of freedom and self-reliance. One of my top values, my one of my most important, is self-reliance. So if I'm broke... Am I self-reliant or dependent? I am 0% self-reliant. I'm reliant on other people to help me or I'm reliant on the government to give me money, right? So for me to achieve self-reliance, I needed the tool of money, which is really just a tool of freedom and independence. That's all it is. So you need to have clarity on how your feelings and your old values are getting in the way of your new values and goals so your feelings stop controlling you and you stop waiting for motivation. Which leads to number four, stop waiting for the right time. When you're broke, you find yourself waiting for resources. You need to find the right mentors. You need the right strategy. You need the right people. You need the right education. You need the right college degree. 
you need the right circumstances. You need the right hacks and techniques. And you need the right luck, right? Just a little bit of it, though. Just so I could get my momentum going, right? I was always waiting for a mentor. I thought I needed that to make more money. Because they always say, you need a mentor. And then I thought I needed money so I could make more money. Because they say you can't make money without money. And I even asked this old guy that I used to go to yoga with if he could loan me $25,000 because I thought I needed money. Needless to say, he never talked to me again. So instead, I built my career as a self-published author. And it was before being self-published was really a thing. I was 21 years old. I printed 5,000 copies of my book from a manufacturer for 25 cents a piece. And I stored the boxes of books in the trunk of my car. I still remember each cardboard box held 50 books. So I filled my entire trunk, my back seats, my passenger seats with books, and I put the rest of these boxes of books in my bedroom. There was no turning back. I was either going to get rich or I was going to die from heart failure from a panic attack. So there was no in between. So every day I would set up stands at farmer's markets where I could hustle my books, bookstores, coffee shops, I rented a table at the University of Oregon campus in the center of campus where I got highly caffeinated and I would stop the kids on their way to class and try to convince them to buy my book. Like It wasn't perfect. It was kind of idiotic, to be honest, because we had the internet and I had no idea how to use the internet. So instead, I was out selling books one by one, driving across America, you know, like I was like selling like dime bags of that pure white, you know. And instead, I was like, hey, you want to buy this book? Like, you don't have any money. Just give me a shoe. Like, if you give me both shoes, I'll resell the shoes and you can have the book. Like, I did anything I could, right? But I sold 5,000 copies of that book and then 10,000. Then I got a book deal with Penguin Random House, the number one English publishing company in the world. And then the gods of wealth started to push the winds in my favor. The winds of financial favor come to you after you get on the boat. But they don't blow if you're still sitting on the dock. And that's why you have to stop waiting for something to happen. You have to stop waiting for somebody or something, right? A broke person says, if somebody could just come by and help me out. But what if they don't show up? You need to stop waiting, right? You might have to go make 100 phone calls, knock on 100 doors. I paid one of my friends to go knock on people's doors, to sell my book. Some other guy was knocking on people's doors in San Diego, California, selling my book, right? Like they thought he was like trying to convert them to a religion. Same thing happened right now. I almost have a million YouTube subscribers. This has turned into a huge thing. At the time I had 2000 YouTube subscribers and I didn't have the money to hire a videographer. So I could either wait until I had the money or instead I bought my own camera I didn't know how to use a camera at all, but I bought a camera that had autofocus and I recorded myself and I got 600,000 subscribers on my own just pressing a button so the camera would autofocus and then magically it made it look like I knew how to properly use a camera. But think about how many people want to be professional YouTubers, but they don't think they can do it unless they have the money to hire a videographer, right? So they wait, they wait, they wait. We say, I don't know how, I don't have the money yet. I don't have the resources. I don't have the time. It's like our minds want to stay broke forever. It's like our minds are designed to try to trick us with logic and rational thinking so much so that we just wait and we never start. It would be logical and rational if I said yes, but I want to have 1 million YouTube subscribers. And right now I only have 2000, but I don't have the money for a videographer to hire. And if I film them myself, they won't look good. And it's better if I just wait until I can be more professional. We think like this every single day and we stay broke forever. I literally made a few million dollars through YouTube recording myself. And I don't even know how to set up manual focus on a video camera still to this day. Now I have some awesome videographers and editors and they do a fantastic job. And I love having the help, but You can't wait unless you want to be broke forever. You have to stop waiting for everything to be perfect. 
So I invite you to think how logic and rational thinking is actually a trick your mind is playing to keep you broke. It's keeping you waiting, it's keeping you preparing and adjusting and thinking, and it's all bullshit. You don't have to be perfect. You don't need to be great when you start. You don't even need to be good, to be honest. You just need to be consistent. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't even need a formal education. If you have an IQ of 80, which is like room temperature, you can still become a millionaire faster than someone with a 140 IQ who graduated the top of their class at Harvard Business School. If you have an idea, if you have a goal and you just start, things happen for you, but they don't happen for you until you start. So my friend, like I said, never really made a video like this. And I say that with all love. Some people might click out of this video and they're like, oh, you know, that's not what I want to hear. But if this speaks to you, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more. And um, I really hope this helps. Like at the end of the day, you can make it really complicated or really simple. And for me, it was really simple. But like Jim Rohn said to do, what's easy to do is easy not to do. So first step, get my free financial success hypnosis and start to change your thinking, your emotions, and your habits with respect to money. It's free. You can click right here. Go to jakeshypnosis.com. It's in the description, the link, or it's pinned as the top comment. You can get it right now for free. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification. You can click right here to watch another and be sure to let me know if you want to see more.